Welcome to BitBoy Crypto. The best way is... <laughs> <laughs> if you became a millionaire, would you keep working? You know, I want to tell you guys something. <laughs> What's going on right now is California's trying to figure out about crypto. My name is Ben. Welcome to BitBoy Crypto. Today is Tuesday, November 15th. Uh, we come to you Monday through Friday in the mornings, in the evening, bringing you all this breaking crypto news and all these crazy crypto weeks, with all these crazy crypto stories and crypto conspiracies and crypto co-conspirators. Uh, we try to decipher the mess and bring it to you. Uh, unfiltered, unadulterated. All that good stuff. DJ, man, it's been quite the week. Uh, ben, yeah. I, I never really uh, asked Ben, how did he feel being stuck overseas during this uh, crazy, tumultuous week of crypto news? Yeah, it's it's definitely been crazy. It was fun having him back yesterday out at C12 today. We'll be back tomorrow, but uh, we've been texting on stuff. It's like every time you think the story's going to stop, it just keeps going. That's it keeps getting more salacious, yeah. more salacious. Yeah. Uh, what do you think of the term polycule? Polycule? Have you seen that? No, I haven't. So seen you know, that. there's a lot of polyamorous relationships. Apparently, there's okay. uh, ten people kind of had a little a circle going where A hooks up with B, also with C, and B hooks up with D, E, and F, and mm. D hooks up with you know. There's this whole thing. <laughs> Molecule, polyamorous, mm. polycule. Okay. And so they're they're calling it. At first, I was like, I don't know if it was the domicile. Yeah, the, yeah. the nice little polycule going I'll over there. I just can't wait for the movie. Uh, yeah. You know, Michael Lewis, uh, author of The Big Short, followed Sam Bankman for the past six months. He obviously has the ending to the movie. Uh, you know, maybe maybe they'll go ahead and get filmed and then get that nice little text at the end of a mm -hmm. movie. It's going to be the best movie. I might have to, I'm definitely going to the theaters to watch the, the Sam Bankman story. Uh, let us know what you would title it in the chat. I think we can get some good titles going. Uh, mm. Also, while you're there, hit that like button. What do you call the Sam Bankman movie? uh bank man fraud i don't know i don't know there, there's some good stuff there uh the bank man fry i don't know there's we'll have to you guys you guys come up with some gold uh what are the chances eth goes below 1k i mean so when bitcoin crashed to 18 it, it fell to 850 now bitcoin's recent crash it held support above a thousand but that doesn't mean that it can't fall below a thousand the more you knock on uh, support the more likely you're going to bust through that door so it, it could go lower but I would look at strong, strong support at the previous low. Um, so if you do want to put in a buy order, uh, you know, I, I, if I'm putting in a buy order under a thousand, I'm putting it at nine hundred ninety nine dollars and ninety nine cents, like Price is Right. I'm trying to beat that next person. I don't care if they got their ETH a little bit cheaper than me. I just want to make sure I get some under a thousand. But I, I think there's going to be strong buying pressure at that previous low, which was close to eight fifty. Check the exchanges. Uh, Frank can probably tell you more about that. All right, uh, let's get into the show here. YouTube, we are uh, coming along on NFT Alpha. Uh, we got some pretty good short content coming out. So I, I just recommend uh, go ahead, subscribe. Uh, some funny, funny stuff on there. If you're going to uh, be on the Twitter app, on the Bird app, uh, since Elon Musk is back, I've noticed my followers have increased. Uh, 38,400. I did a few tweets yesterday. Uh, I retweeted the New York Times thing. Yeah. We are going to talk about this. Entire piece is 2,218 words. No mention of uh, the customer funds, Alameda trading, the millions of traders wiped out, and uh, the, the word fraud. Let me share this while I have this so I don't have to backtrack. Uh, the word good. count on, they're calling it the puff piece, I would agree. Fraud, Enron, crime, illiquid, stolen, hidden, criminal, backdoor, zero. He's getting sleep. Hey, they mentioned that <laughs> at least once, though. Uh, so, yeah, definitely a fluff piece. I, I, I tweeted at the guy. I, I normally don't, you know, try to reply to journalists. Usually they're just trying to do a good job. I, I was like, man, what is going on? This yeah. is New York Times. It used to be a you know stalwart institution of you know free press and exposing the light on cockroaches. But that was clearly a fluff piece. Uh, I know we're going to get into the story, but what, what are your initial thoughts? I, I'm, <laughs> I would say shocked, but I'm definitely not shocked at this point. I'm more kind of disappointed. I mean, disappointed. The big you sound, hair. Yeah, you sound so much like a dad when you say disappointed. But I, I'm, I'm sad, really. Like it's disappointing yeah. to see something like this happen, uh, where they are like mainstream media in general is being extremely soft on this. Where with like the the other comparison you see a lot of people referring to is Theranos with Elizabeth Holmes. Yeah, she got lambasted. Yeah. I think there's a little element of her being a female there. Could have been, but it was far less money, you know, yeah. far less fraud. And now fraud. we have the element of him being a huge donor. Yeah, of to course. people that they like. And that's the part that really is extremely frustrating because it seems like the more you dig into it, the more 
layers of uh, conflict of interest comes up all across the board. So yeah, you know what? I, I will bring this up now that I mean we are kind of going into it. I, I tweeted at the guy and uh, I brought up three specific things. Um, why no mention of his father helping craft a legislation yeah. with Senator Warren? Why not mention his mother's super PAC? And why not mention the connection with Gary Gensler and MIT? I have uh, you saw thirty eight thousand four hundred suppressed. Look at that. Look at two, two likes. Wow. Two likes. On a on a fairly large uh, tweet here that's getting a lot of traction. Yeah, I definitely got buried. Yeah, uh, you know what though? They do show it high on Ben. So maybe um maybe this whole tweet here is uh, the thing being suppressed there. So yeah, just just interesting. Just interesting. Thir- three thousand uh, thirty eight thousand, almost forty K, but yeah, I got I got two likes and I thought it was a fire tweet. <laughs> uh, all right. Speaking of uh, fire, the floor for JPEG junkies is lava. We minted this at 69 ADA. Wow. If you minted, you are up considerably on that. Uh, so congrats to everybody who believed. Uh, we minted during a huge Cardano conference, maybe in retrospect, not the greatest move. We didn't sell out for about 48 hours. The floor dropped all the way to 50. You know what I did? I swept the floor because I believed in my project. I haven't sold a single one. I've given out probably a dozen altcoin daily. Wendy, basically any guests on ATB who wants a JPEG junkie, I'll give them one, a uh, couple contests. So. Yeah, uh, the floor is up. If you bought 50, you basically 6 x your uh, investment there. I think Cardano, maybe there's a little bit of difference in Cardano price, so maybe it's only a 5X. It could be even a 7X. I don't know. Let me uh, ask you this. Do you think you're getting a big influx of Solana users moving over to Cardano NFTs? Yeah, we're definitely getting uh, – Cardano as a whole is getting a nice influx of Solana users. I don't know you know, what percentage. Uh, maybe some of my Art Punks fam, uh, maybe some of the youths fam sees the JPEG junkies. They like what we're doing over there. Uh, so, yeah, I, I think there's definitely an element of that. Uh, just, you know, if I was going to say anything, why should you buy a JPEG junkie? One, we're going to have a prequel cool website in the future that may be a, a month away. But what we're doing today, what we're doing today, all our secondary sales volume, uh, we get a we get a portion of that back. Can we just share this real quick? Our volume so far is three quarters of a million ADA. All of our volume for the month of November, we're going to pay back to the holders we're going to do a free airdrop in december and not only that we're not going to drop you ada we've been uh we've been scooping up a, a, a low cap gem i think it's up a little bit it's it's gained a little later so you're going to get even more we're going to give you charlie token it trades under c3 a hundred percent of our revenue is going back to the holders for the month of november uh so yeah just i, I just wanted to share that I, I don't i don't try to shill the jpeg junkies when i'm up here that often but i i, I just wanted to celebrate that we have a almost a 300 floor Maybe jump in before it's 400. Maybe jump in before it's 500. I don't know. Not financial advice, but I, I swept the floor. So that's all I'm saying. All right. Uh, speaking of, uh, you know, floors here, if your knowledge is at the bottom with crypto, you need to catch up and uh, level level tape that, uh, that crypto knowledge. We have a book coming out pretty soon. Uh, make sure you pre-order on Amazon. And let's get Ben to the top of the New York Times bestseller list. Uh, although I don't even want to be on the New York Times bestseller. Yeah, at this point, New York Times. I'm done. We just want to be a bestseller in general. So we, yeah, yeah. We just want we want to be the global leaderboard, uh, whatever that is. I, I know there are other things. I think it's actually Amazon. Dang it. I think the the like the other known uh, yeah. is the Amazon bestsellers list. So yeah, let's let's get to the top of all the lists, even if they don't like crypto, even if they don't like us, even if they don't like you having financial freedom. Let's force them to recognize the force that is uh, crypto and the Bit Squad. I think we are a force to be reckoned with. And the events of the past two weeks have shown that. Yeah. Um, and I can't wait to hear some of the the tea that Ben is going to spill. Uh, do you have any insight? You know, I, I would be honest. I haven't asked Ben, hey, what, what are your secrets? Tell me your secrets. Uh, sometimes knowledge is scary. Uh, I'm scared to know some of these things. Um, what Can you spill any insight on how you feel about it? About what the whole SBF some of the, the the secrets about SBF and the fraud and some of the the, priv- the the knowledge that he's privy to. Yeah, I mean, most of the stuff that he can't share is more on our plan, the political legislation ah, plan, because okay. we can't talk about it because mm-hmm. you're not allowed to push public plans like that until you know. For, it's just weird the way all the politics stuff works. But that's funny. Jiraj is saying they can't see the tweet. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, you know, I mean, for the most part, it's just the more it's almost like the more questions you ask, the more dirt you find. It's just layers upon layers. I'm so you know, like you start looking above FTX, you start looking above SBF. Like they're definitely a piece here, but I don't think they're the. I don't think he's the mastermind behind all of this stuff. So yeah, uh, all wars are bankers' wars, or uh, like a bank man, exactly. war, or woman, you know, yeah. bank person, bank man. Yeah, 
Yeah, uh, yeah. Eisenhower was right. I, I, I've said that multiple times. Um, I don't want to get into what that means. Drew, Drew is mm. like standing and applauding right now. Eisenhower was right. All right, uh, let's go to the coin market cap. What, is this a crypto show or uh, should I get tin foil out? Yeah. Uh, Bitcoin dominance up to thirty-eight point three, or I should say down. down. Uh, Ethereum down to eighteen point one percent. Still less than half of Bitcoin's uh, dominance there. The volume. Uh, 66 billion market cap, 850 billion right there. Uh, the Gway down to 17, I think it was 19 just earlier. But if we look at the prices, a little bit of a relief bounce here. We have a uh, Bitcoin still below 17,000. Uh, we'll definitely ask Frank about some of these levels. Ethereum uh, up slightly as well. BNB, XRP, obviously that uh, that Fox News uh rumor is clearly got people excited is is had some nice nice movement yeah i'm uh, sure recently. we'll probably touch on it at the end in the xrp coinbase but the, the big thing i saw was all those basically all those amicus briefs are being allowed which is kind of unprecedented from judges that judge torres basically the language seems to be va favoring uh ripple in a lot of different ways so. all right uh people are saying you know what go to the tweet oh i can't because ben I, i'm not gonna have ben retweet oh, it yeah. i'm not i, I would i would I, I just i just realized i'm not you have your phone in your pocket i do have my phone in my pocket yeah. you know what i will do that Technology. while i look at some of these uh look at some of these alts here cardano uh not up as much i mean then we get into that four percent club up four and a half four and a half about four percent so for cardano doge and polygon here polka dot up a little bit solana Having a little bit of a resurgence here of 7%, but when you look at that weekly, it's still cut yeah. in half of where it was. So just a week ago, about a week ago, $29. Uh, Uniswap uh, up a little bit. If we go to the top gainers and the top losers, 26% uh, for Stacks, XRP mm. uh, in the number two spot. Algorand, AJ is going to be happy about that, the, the number 27 coin. Uh, all these are up in the double digits. If we go to the top losers, Trust Wallet, Helium, Convex, and BitDAO. So we're seeing uh seeing some uh negative Tr action. But then I would say though Trust quickly. Wallet up seventy percent on the week, so that's a pullback. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean the the weekly there uh, obviously pull uh, telling the story. Let me sign out of JPEG Junkie. Let me sign into mine. All right. Let's get this tweet going. Bit Squad, can you do something for me? Uh. All right. We're scrolling up. We're scrolling up. All right. I am retweeting it right now. Why not mention? Oh, you know what? It looks like the Bit Squad already showed a little love. There In that go. little bit of time, I've gotten five retweets. So it is the Bit Squad. You know what it is, though? You are you have to look for it. It's people looking for it manually. And so, uh, come on. Come on, Elon. Help us out. Uh, all right. Now, Frank, you got to help us with these charts. I look at this. Lots I'm of look seeing at. some upward action. I'm seeing some downward action. But I'm seeing a, a higher low. Am I just a noob not knowing what I'm looking at? Or is there something here? I am a noob. <laughs> DZ is not a noob. Well, uh, we will take a look at it, guys. Obviously, uh, we do have some interesting stuff popping up here on the charts. And, ooh, look at this. We actually got a real uh, mouse here yeah. uh, liking that. Uh, but we have some interesting stuff on the charts. Some of the higher time frames are still giving us those bearish signals. Uh, but last night on my live stream, we were looking at the daily, which did look like it wanted to roll up, uh, which was making us potentially, uh, you know, expecting this potential move to the upside. The question is, how high will it bring us? Is it going to be a trend reversal or are we just going to get a small bounce before rolling back over to the downside? Uh, let me just do a quick refresh here to make sure all these levels are updated. Uh, and then there we go. Okay. So mm. starting off on the higher time frames, if you take a look at the uh, let's look at the five day, obviously for anybody who uh, has not been watching the streams recently, uh, we do have uh, obviously some really bearish signals here. We do have a four day blood diamond, which is confirmed. Uh, so that is definitely more bearish, especially on such a high time frame. What was the last blood diamond and what happened? Uh, last blood diamond on the four day specifically did bring us down. Uh, it was right about here and it did bring us down about 29%. So what's the, the date on that? I'm sorry to interrupt. No, I you're just, good. I have boomer eyes and I can't see. <laughs> hey, I'm not the only person who can't read the screen. Uh, that makes me feel better. Uh, but yeah, uh, this was from, uh, November 13th, 2019. Ooh, uh, so yeah, yeah. Way it, it, these do not pop up very often, so they are definitely a very rare bearish sign. Now it doesn't mean that it has to play out exactly like the previous one did. And to be quite honest, 
Uh, this one already did bring us down about 21%. Mm. So, mm. you know, it, it doesn't mean that we're guaranteed going to get that 29%. So, you know, this could potentially be uh, already have been played out, but you just want to remember that it's on, uh, you know, it's printed, it's confirmed, and you just want to keep it, uh, you know, in your mind because it could continue to show its face here. Um, just some things to keep in mind here. And then, uh, you know, three day and your two day do not have any blood diamonds or anything. So that is a good sign. Uh, but that's what I mean when I say the higher time frames do have those bearish signals. However, yesterday, like I said, on my live stream, we were looking at this daily VWAP, this yellow wave rolling back up to that zero line, uh, you know, indicating that we were probably going to print a green dot here pretty soon. And I was saying, watch that green dot. If we're going to get a move up, that might be where, uh, you know, the move will start. Uh, and we obviously did get a move up here. So uh, we're going to have to see how this plays out. Now, overall, money flow is not looking very good here. As you can see, uh, you know, we came into the red. Now we're back in the green, which technically would be a good sign. But, um, you know, we are in a bear market. So it could be very likely that we kind of just roll back over into the red. Um, so, you know, don't have too high hopes for this money flow, at least at this point. I'm um, going to see how much this green dot can bring us up. Uh, but coming down to the lower time frames, just to uh, look at some levels here, uh, we are starting to form somewhat of a new trading range here. As you can see, obviously, uh, this is basically how the bear market has been working, you know, thus far. You get a big move down, some bearish consolidation, a big move down, bearish consolidation, big move down, bearish consolidation. And now we just got another move down. Um, so the question is, where are we headed next, right? That's what everybody wants to know. Um, but it does look like we are starting to form a new little trading range down here. Um, and, you know, I did pull a little bit of volume. And we are above this red line, which is the point of control. Um, so typically, when you do flip this POC to support, it is likely that you come up and at least revisit the value area high, which right now is coming in at about $17,255. Um, and then I, I put this white box because, uh, you know, we could maybe make it to the top of this box, which is coming closer to about seventeen four. So because we're above that POC, potentially, you know, this green dot uh, on the daily could easily bring us up into the highs of this range. Now, if we break that value area high and continue this move up, the next area I would be looking is, uh, you know, about 18.2, 18.3 might be that next stop if we are able to break out of this value area high, basically this white box. That would be the next major level I'd look at if we get a decent breakout here. But until we break out of that value area high decisively, I'm not really expecting that big of a move up. Um, so I am thinking that we could potentially just kind of range here again. Now you guys have the level that if broken, you know, uh, you know, we could get a decent move up to that level about 18.3. Um, but yeah, I think maybe we just kind of consolidate here, bounce around sideways. Uh, it might be time to start trading these uh, shorter time frames again and just catching the bottoms and the tops of the range um, and just kind of scalping it. So, uh, you know, nothing really screaming that we're going to get like a massive move up. You know, a lot of times, uh, you know, we could see these signals start to print and be like, hey, guys, we might be on the verge of a big move. Nothing really screaming at me here. Uh, however, on the lower time frames, you can see. Um, that we are starting to print some uh, somewhat of a bearish divergence here on the 15 minute. Um, and these lower time frames do have the money flow generally coming out. So we might cool off in the short term. We also have these medium hourly time frames. Uh, you see the VWAP starting to come down. So two hour looking to print a red dot here soon. Three and four hour VWAP starting to cool off. Um, so it, we'll have to see if these lower time frames can bring us down. This green dot might not give us much. But if it does, now you guys at least have the targets to look for. Um, and then I do just want to point out specifically, I did talk about this yesterday, to the downside. If we do wind up seeing some crazy action to the downside, uh, the major level that I'm really looking at is this green spider line coming in at about 15,470. Um, now, if we break this spider line, we do have a pretty big volume gap underneath us. And the next real decent area of support is going to be all the way down here. Um, at this spider line, which comes in at about 14.3. So if we start losing this green spider line at, at uh, you know, 15.4, you know, about 15.4, 15.5, we lose this, we could see price start moving pretty quickly down into the 14,000s. Again, uh, you know, higher time frames with those blood diamonds, it could happen, but nothing really locally saying that, like, you know, buckle up, guys, we're about to move down there. I think we might just range a little bit, um, but we'll have to see. Now you guys have targets to look at, again, if that green dot does bring us up. And then... Uh, Another reason why, you know, potentially we could see some more upside here is if you look at the SPY, guys, the SPY actually had a pretty big move. Um, we actually smashed through this resistance, absolutely ripped up. And now we're hitting our next level here at about 401. Um, and we came right to it, right? So we did see a pretty big breakout here for the SPY, um, which maybe we see um, 
maybe we see uh you know bitcoin kind of follow in its footsteps but nothing really looking that extreme at this point but it could be a reason one of the reasons why we're seeing a little bit of a move up here but again uh starting to print some bearish divergence here bearish divergences here on the four hour time frame for the spy so this move uh might also you know be able to uh, be ready to cool off a little bit here uh as well so i just wanted to show that you know SPY showing a little bit of strength. Bitcoin might try to follow, um, but again, looking like it wants to cool off at this point. But now you guys have the levels to watch. Um, I think that's all I got. Back to DZ. Did you did you tweet? Did you send that tweet? We did. Nice. All right. Back to DZ. Bing bong. Bing bong. Yeah. Shout out to the Candle Mafia yeah. again for winning that female. I was going to say, smash the likes for the Candle yeah. Mafia winning that uh, competition. That's still uh, very clutch. Yeah, absolutely crazy. Back to DZ. Bing bong. Yeah. I, I trust in the Candle Mafia. I opened a little scalp short, short term uh, short on uh, Bitcoin. I didn't do. 15, whatever I did, 16, 200 as a take profit. Uh, thank you, TJ, for sharing the JPEG store link. I jumped into the Discord while uh, Frank was talking, and they're all like freaking out, saying "delist, sweep the floor." <laughs> so get in early if if you want to get in. I don't know that price might hit four. Who knows? Not financial advice. Just uh, you know, maybe maybe the sooner the better. There. All right, let's talk about Bitcoin here. Renewed Bitcoin market swoon has put price report at 13k in the crosshairs. Uh, this is according to TA. Uh, yeah, as long as it doesn't hit that 3K mark. Well, uh, I, I'm worried that 13K, 13K number is the new uh, liquidation for Sailor. I think it's 13.5. heard that. Five. So before he has to post more Bitcoin. Yeah, obviously. yeah. Liquidation number maybe. Uh, yeah, yeah. He'll have to uh, yeah add more collateral right. at that level, which mm -hmm. he does have access to more collateral. Um, so it's not like a liquidation event. Um, and also, this is TradFi. Uh, it's not like on the blockchain where a scam wick will like liquidate a, right. a whole holding of wrapped Bitcoin or something like that. Speaking of wrapped Bitcoin, I feel bad for that wrapped Solana Bitcoin. <laughs> All right, the Bitcoin market is recently wakened from a prolonged slumber, putting bears in the driver's seat. That's the message from experts studying these patterns who now see a high chance of sliding to 14K or below. Uh, fell 22% last week, hitting that two year low of 15,600, uh, more than two years, right? Uh, this breakdown has been accompanied by one of the worst crypto catalysts to date, weighing on investor sentiment and asset prices. Combine the crypto catalyst in the FTX Alameda blow up with a continued bleak macroeconomic backdrop that has not materially changed and continuation to the downside is the path of least resistance at this point, as opposed to going up, uh, citing support between 14K and 16K. Uh, based on various metrics, we suspect lower will be seen and quite possibly this might not find an effective low until we get into December. But for now, let it rip. Uh, all right. So, yeah, people are saying a lot of the timelines are kind of coming in to uh, a, a same three month window mm -hmm. post election. Uh, I'm here in January. Some guests, I think Crow said January. A lot of people are saying December, year in, beginning of year. Um, and it just it seems like traditional markets have done this. Uh, on average, obviously there are no huge metrics. Sell in May, walk away, buy in July. You're flying high, but there are historical aberrations, and oftentimes there is uh, weird tax things that happen. And so December, January, it's kind of always falls in line with stock markets, and it seems like Bitcoin just likes to pump and dump uh, around December. Um, just kind of like traditional markets. I'd have to, you know, I'll ask Gareth about that next time he's on. Yeah, there's he, some, he knows all those. There's things. some typical end of the year stuff that you see in traditional and crypto markets, some tax loss harvesting that goes on right at the end of the year where if you can, you know, there's certain positions, especially if you're a big trader, that if you hold under a year versus over a year, some subject to capital gains tax, that sort of stuff. So if you can close certain positions in a loss right at the end of the year, um, that can reduce your taxable amount. So yeah, some, and it's not like, you know, open a turbo long or turbo short on these calls. Just uh, historically, they kind of, there's more of a aberration uh, or there's more of a consideration towards those moves. Not that you can predict it exactly, but also October. They, they call it Pumptober for a reason. Um, again, don't just like open along on October 1st and close it on the 31st. But it's just something to add to the to the toolbox there. All right, Bitcoin diverges from tech stocks as FTX fallout continues. Oh, man, we missed the tech stock pump. The largest uh, digital currency's 30-day rolling correlation with the equities fell to 017 uh, one would be a perfect correlation. It's lowest level since November of 21 before recovering to a 0.4, according to data from Kaiko. Uh, correlation coefficient of one means the assets are moving perfectly together. All right. Meanwhile, crypto link stocks such as Coinbase, Mining Group Stronghold, and tech firm MicroStrategy posted sharp declines on Monday as the FTX turmoil continued. 
Coinbase lost nearly 7% of noon uh, Eastern time, while Stronghold and MicroStrategy slipped 4 and 5% respectively. I've actually never been more bullish uh, for Coinbase mm -hmm. as I am now. Like, I, I haven't bought any coin, uh, the stock coin that trades under coin. I, I'm thinking about it, though. Yeah, I'm thinking uh, about it. Kathy Woods from ARK Invest, obviously a big investor in coin. She's been going, made some pretty substantial purchases here recently since they took Yeah, and she had very substantial losses. Uh, Absolutely. You know, her, her fund bled a lot of equity. However, she's going to have the biggest gains. Uh, yep. She had the biggest gains 18 months ago, however long ago April was. Uh, or the year before, and she'll have the the biggest gains twenty months from now. Yeah, again. she's she's definitely got conviction when it comes to Bitcoin and blockchain. So early buyer uh, too. Yeah, hopefully early it buyer. pays off. All right, uh, the loosening of the the tech trading platforms is a reversal of a month long trend. In May, the correlation between Bitcoin and Nasdaq broke 0. 0.8 for the first time, and Bitcoin's tandem trading to the broader S and P also hit similar levels. In June, the correlation between Bitcoin and S P fell to around 0. 0.5, and it's been around there ever since. Uh, yeah, it's uh, we, we say the Fed kind of runs thing. This is it's not so much a correlation where stocks and Bitcoin are or, you know, other cryptos are just so similar. Uh, we derive so much of our price action from Fred, Fed's printing policy and the Fed's remarks on their printing policy. So they make a remark. Everything goes up. And that's where you get that correlation. Or uh, down. Yeah, it's just just a little Fed action there. All right. Edward Snowden. Uh oh to buy Bitcoin and focus on DeFi sector as centralized institutions like FTX collapse. Uh, he revealed that he could begin to buy back in the crypto market using DEXs. His opinion comes as Bitcoin seems to be consolidating around 16K. What is his fiat off-ramp in Russia? That's a good question. I have no idea. Isn't well, he maybe, like stuck in a hotel room or something? He is, yeah, maybe, but that's why he's a big proponent of DeFi. Maybe he's running it through various different places. Maybe he's got over-the-counter deals he can do, that sort of stuff. So. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah he's Peter. like, he's actually still meeting the people in the McDonald's parking lot. Yeah. Um, all I right. Mean, uh, for those of you who don't know, Edward Stone was pretty involved at the very beginning of Bitcoin as well, because that's part of the time he was kind of on the run and all that sort of stuff. So, yeah. Living yeah. on Bitcoin. Uh, it's, it's a fascinating story. If you don't know much about it, uh, how many years ago was that? Eight, Ali, you might know 10, something like that. Yeah. It was, it was a way ways back. I guess we're pushing, probably pushing. Yeah. 10, maybe even 12 at this point. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, he shined a light on, uh, our surveillance program. Uh, those who don't know. All right. In a tweet, Snowden revealed that the market still has a lot of trouble ahead. However, it is the first time in a while that he's feeling the itch to scale back into the market. Uh, here he is, you know, posting some TA. While most people say this is not financial advice, they're lying, but this is actually not financial advice since I have zero financial education and no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> oh, so when he says it, it's, it's not lying, but uh, other people, they obviously is financial advice. All right, Snowden also spoke about the U.S. government's current handling of the collapse. He maintains that regulators such as the SEC have been palling around with the thieves who just robbed 5 million people. Uh, I, I can't help but like everything he says, I, I see through like a KGB filter mm -hmm. or um, I'm sorry, what is their new acronym? FSB. Yeah. Um, like so I, I see everything through that filter. Uh, if you see his Joe Rogan appearance, like he he led with so much uh, criticism for the CIA and FBI. I was like, I felt like there's a KGB agent on the other side of the camera, you know, with the with the AK or something. And this falls in line with that. But at the same time, I can't help but agree with him most yeah. of the time. Like, it's frustrating. It's like, I know this is like a, a Kremlin talking point. Right. But it doesn't mean it's not true or not valid. Yeah, it is tough. He's very anti-United States, obviously. Uh, yeah. But his opinions, I think, on privacy and freedom, uh, he makes a lot of really good points. He spoke at the Bitcoin... 2019 conference i think yeah. like remote yeah. in you know from satellite or something like that and i listened to that talk and it was it's inspiring you know he gave a very good talk on the merits of privacy and why it matters as a human right so fsb uh, or sbf <laughs> oh, 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 oh plot thickens whoa, whoa. Uh, all right, all right. Yeah. Okay. yeah uh yeah so that, that was just basically his remarks uh I, I, that is a that is a good talking point though they're pounding around with the thieves that just robbed five million people mm -hmm. that is that's very pithy and that's that's gonna stick it's yeah. very sticky it is the sec and these government officials are palling around with the people who just robbed five million people so yeah. uh yeah when you when you put it that way it does piss me off dang it dang it snowden snowden was right all right uh well speaking of being right there's you know there's two sides to every coin here Billionaire Mark Cuban still believes in crypto despite price crash compares to early days of internet. Despite the ongoing market downturn worsened by the collapse, many seasoned investors have come out to voice their ongoing belief in crypto. 
<laughs> the outspoken owner of the Dallas Mavericks, Mark Cuban, declared he is confident about the future of the technology. The businessman stated that 60% of his crypto portfolio is in Bitcoin and about 30% in ETH. The remaining percent uh, stored in other unspecified digital assets. Of course, it used to only be about 6% Bitcoin and 3% ETH. But then he invested in all those rug pulls and scams, and then they became effectively worth zero. So then that Bitcoin allocation just kind of ballooned. I'm joking, but not really. Yeah, he is he is known in the crypto world and on crypto Twitter. It's just he buys rug pull after rug pull after rug pull. He's a DJN, just like us. Yeah, that's you know what? When you put it that way, he's like a he's a young DZ. Yeah, is what you're saying. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, I remember thinking. So he's like DZ when I thought APY of 160 percent is good. Yeah, he was. He <laughs> literally, what was it? Uh, the but one he's got a billionaire. Most... He's supposed to be smarter than me. <laughs> Iron Finance. Like, Man, look at this APY. I'm getting on Iron. I think it was Iron Finance or something like That's that. That's right. One of the first ones oh that he really god, got wrecked you're on. Right. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. I mean, I I, I appreciate that he's trying it, you know, and getting after it. Now, who knows? I'm not, uh, you know, advocating for any project he's picked or what his motivations are, but. I think he's got a good take here that it's it is like the internet we don't need heavy regulation we need so a soft framework i think is what i think we need. yeah and everyone uh you know the criticism they throw mark's way is that he got out at the peak it's not like that he was like this fantastic builder I th it was it like radio.com broadcast.com uh, yeah was, i can't remember what it, it was just a basically it was like one of those ideas everyone had like why not radio but on the internet right oh my god you know then there's 30 people building that uh, same idea all at the same time but he had a great exit with Yahoo or some uh, one of the big at the time uh, AOL. You know, there before it wasn't just Fang stocks or MAGA stocks, Microsoft, Apple, Google, and Amazon. Uh, back in the day, back in my day, it used to be AOL. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see, I'm trying to think of some of the other ones that aren't around. Uh, Compaq was really big. Netscape Gateway. was the big Netscape. one. Netscape. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So the same players uh, weren't around back then, and the ones that were, uh, they were much smaller. Like Amazon was still like books. Um, but yeah, he got out at the peak. He sold it. Uh, you know, I think it was he basically he pulled a Tom from MySpace. Like the party was pumping, and then it was like, no, 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 you should stay. You should stay. And he's like, nah, man, I'm out of here. I'm leaving. Right. I'm driving home. I'm gonna go buy the Mavericks. <laughs> I'm gonna go buy a basketball team, and uh, I think it ended up working out pretty well for yeah. him. All right, the best analogy I can use is the early days of streaming. The crap people had to do to listen to a 16k stream of music was insane, according to the businessman. Yeah, I think it was radio.com I, yeah. I don't know it was something it was three initials like bm bwn or something like it was something about broadcast internet broadcast something or other but you're right it was internet basically you could listen to sports games on the internet before anybody else. you know like if you were driving you want to listen to your local hey i want to get the falcons games but I mean, I'm that's in actually Cincinnati. a great use case because no one wants to hear like the classic rock station in Albuquerque because right. it's just get the exact same as your classic rock station. Well, and you don't want to hear sports the sports AM. It's right. huge. The sports talk for that local area. You wanted yeah. to hear it for your local Jim area. Rome in the 90s. Yeah. I'm trying to think who else was big back then. But yeah, I know like Jim Rome was like the main guy. All right. Let's talk about gold. Uh, not and not Peter Schiff. Uh, no, thanks. I don't want to go to your advisor summit. Get me out of here. All right. Gold scales three month pink on peak on softer dollar. Hopes of smaller Fed hikes. Woo! Gold's at a three-month high. Cue that Peter Schiff tweet of him saying, I was right. Yeah. Gold prices scaled three 90-day peak on Tuesday as the dollar pulled back after the Fed Reserve signals uh, a slower pace of interest rate hikes. The dollar index touched a three-month low, lifting gold's appeal for those holding other currencies. Among other precious metals, spot silver retreated from its highest since early June. It was last trading 39% uh, lower to 2188 per ounce platinum uh rose to 1027 an ounce and palladium uh jumped 1.72 to 2000 god i used to be on a, like stupid 4chan biz boards like way back in the day and they would not shut up about palladium and i remember like looking into what it and you, like oh you, there's like clearly what are you saying say what what are you saying palladium platinum no no there's another precious metal right here platinum rose one percent palladium oh palladium yeah okay, palladium i just looked palladium. up and saw platinum i was like what is okay so i didn't i never what is that just another precious it's just metal. a uh industrial metal yeah. i mean i i couldn't tell you i'm sure like medical equipment is probably a huge use case and maybe telecommunication devices um but oh, yeah catalytic, I remember, com catalytic converters okay yeah okay and those things i mean you, i've seen the videos you know like where they catch the thief underneath the car and then they like surround the car and call the police okay i've got to start like kicking them and stuff. i've got to fess up for yeah. the last 20 years, Palladium. I thought platinum was in catalytic converters. 
hundred percent. I was like, oh yeah, it's expensive because there's platinum in it. I thought the same. It's palladium. <laughs> Just realized maybe there's both. Maybe because I I, I want to say I've I've definitely heard of like blue collar mechanics like maybe tenth grade education definitely say like platinum and like they're the ones that actually know okay, more yeah. about it. Platinum and palladium are both used for catalytic converters. Okay, okay. So it's I'm not stupid. All right. Yeah. So I mean, I remember looking at it back then, and it was just like, uh, there, there, I, I'm, I'd have to double check, but it was definitely below platinum. I remember. I think it was like between gold and platinum. And that's mm. why I was like, oh, you know, oh, that 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 was that was gaining satoshis this yeah. whole time. Where's Drew when you need him? <laughs> yeah, he has. He, oh, knows. he pulls a coin out of yeah, his pocket. Exactly. And then BJ has another one that he has tricks with. That's like a thousand <laughs> years old. All right. Uh, hyper Bitcoinization. Failing economies, overbearing governments push people to adopt Bitcoin. Uh, Nakamoto Institute co-founder Daniel Krawis uh, described Bitcoin's coming rise to power as hyper Bitcoinization. This will emerge in part due to bad policies, failing economies, and overbearing government intervention. It will force people to opt out of fiat hegemony. It's almost like the same message we've been screaming for years. Uh, the failures of fiat, Lebanon, Turkey, Venezuela, Cuba, Zimbabwe, and several other countries have faced issues of hyperinflation. Fiat currencies are in a race to the bottom, prompting governments to implement dubious policies to stop the rot. I get so frustrated when people say Bitcoin doesn't have a use case because they live in this cushy country mm -hmm. that... Yeah, maybe inflation is quote unquote bad to us right now because it's in double digits. But there's people with real issues where they can't afford to buy milk the next month because inflation's so bad. And these are the people that Bitcoin is going to save, protect, uh, help insulate from poverty, from death, from starvation. And when they say there is absolutely no use case for Bitcoin, they're thinking in this cushy nerf world. They live a nerf life with Nerf guns, and they don't know real strife. They don't know real adversity. These people where your inflation inflates to the point where you go to sleep and you wake up 40% more poor because, you know, the, the president shot his brother. Yeah, that's that's a real use case for Bitcoin. And uh, it's saving people. It's, it's saving people from starvation. It's saving people. I don't want to turn dark here, but when starvation is so bad, people eat their kids. And it's literally saving people from these horrific conditions. And for people to just dismiss it so easily and nonchalantly it's just very frustrating to me all right sorry i'm, I'm no, gonna I move agree. on here i'm with you 100 percent. all right world population reaches 8 billion but how many are in crypto uh they tip the global population to tick over 8 billion uh wow today so we just uh now i i also remember hearing you know some estimates that happened a few months ago but uh, now it's the UN is saying we are over 8 billion, Jeez. but they're saying the next billion isn't coming for another 15 years. If you did the math, I think 7 billion was definitely less than 15 years. So we are, uh, we're seeing a huge slowdown in population. There's smarter people than me who talk about how that is uh, very devastating for an economy. Just look at Japan in the nineties and early two thousands. Uh, we are kind of where Japan is in the eighties, I think with our birth rates. Um, again, that's, that, it's a very, nuanced subject that people just yeah. can't really wrap their head around second and third order consequences so i, I don't know but yeah just kind of you know uh briefly uh pushing this how many of the eight billion are in crypto uh now we were four billion just in 1974 that was 48 years ago uh the growth rate is below one percent but will continue to slow that means it'll take another 15 years for us to reach nine billion and we won't possibly hit 10 billion until 2080 so 15 years from now, it'll be 37. So uh, that'd be 43 years from now. So 15 years for the next billion, but then 43 billion, uh, 43 years for the next billion after that. Uh, China and India are the most populous with a, more than a third of the population just between them two. Uh, but here we go. Here is the, uh, the lead. The market research suggests that as much as 10% already hold crypto. Mm. Now, this is, I guess, uh, kind of a, you know figures that maybe the UN is using. Uh, this is market research firm GWI. I don't know much about them, but 10%. Okay, so now they're saying we are at the 10% mark. What does that feel? Does that feel accurate to you? Now, I'm not out here asking Europeans. I'm not asking yeah. uh, people in India. So, you know, I have a very limited viewpoint of, you know, urban Georgia. Um, but how does 10% sit to you? Does that feel right? It feels roughly right. I mean, it's going to be really hard, like you said, to predict, you know, like you've got to say you've got a, an African village and they're all operating off one phone. They've got X amount of addresses built into it, something like that. Like, it's really hard to quantify this. Uh, but 10 percent, I'd say this. It seems a little high to me, but isn't shocking. You know, like if it's 8 percent, 
in reality, I'll take 10%. So, yeah. Uh, I think yeah, I give it a, a 2% margin. margin. Yeah. So it yeah, seems technically 40, but, approximately yeah. accurate. One thing I found interesting, I'm sure it's in response to the story CZ tweeted today, 8 billion people will be using crypto in, in a few years. So he's estimating basically the entire population as it stands today to be using crypto three to five years, depending on how you define a few. But yeah. um, that is a pretty bold statement in my opinion. Um, I, I think it's real funny. We're having fun with those uh, comments. I, I like to laugh at tragedy. And if you're typing here, that's not affecting you. Um, oh, but yeah, yeah the, the new poll and like all this stuff. It's, They're talking about I'm, I'm, I have fun with it, too. It is if, if you think, you know, it's, it's just one of those things you can't really dwell on because then you'll just be Whoa. one of those sad sacks. It's like, oh, the world's where terrible. And you walk around like Eeyore. You don't want to be that guy. They're all they're all replying to where is it? Here it is. They're all talking about that. Yeah, that was a good one, too. And then someone else said, you know, the, the former CEO of, you know what? Uh, ETH. Yeah, yeah it's, it's good stuff. All right. Um, sp speak of the devil. All right. SBF tells New York Times that he could be worse. Uh, all right. So we're going to talk about the fluff piece that we alluded to in the beginning of the show. Uh, he told the New York Times that he had numerous regrets over the collapse of the company. He says he's been getting sleep and playing video games. I mean, what do we expect him to do? I don't know. Told the New York Times that he has numerous regrets in a, oh. a wide-ranging interview in which the paper described him as surprisingly calm. Uh, this was, this came, I just discovered this right before the stream. More lies, more and more lies. Apparently he sucks at League. He's bronze too. I heard that. He's bronze too. I heard that. They made him sound like he was like a savant. And I'm thinking like, oh, he must be diamond, you know, platinum, something or other. Bronze too after thousands of matches. I'm, I'm. I just feel so uh, misled. Yeah, and I mean, I could, you know, I was a pro uh, esports gamer. Like I, I live that world. I, I was Twitch streamer full time, and yeah, I mean, smarts doesn't equate to uh, good video game skill. If you need any uh, evidence of that, get smoked by a twelve year old at Call of Duty as they're like screeching into the microphone. You're, you're not getting really uh, like Einstein vibes no. from uh, these individuals. Just like muscle twitch speed and you know uh, repetition. Um, but yeah, it was very frustrating when I saw that he was such a weak gamer. Because what the heck are you doing? Like, right. you're, you're on speed. Right. Uh, this isn't allegedly. Like, he's tweeted about his speed usage. You're on speed. How are you not good at video games? Like, isn't all right, so you're the LOL expert. I don't yeah. know. I've never played League of Legends. I know you and Brian play. Yeah, I wouldn't say expert, but even in my day, I was at least gold. It's a little bit now. I mean, does fast reaction times that can only be given by amphetamines? I mean, doesn't that seem like that's a helpful thing, not oh, yeah. a hurtful thing in that video game? Well, being able to focus and farm and all that. So, yeah, it would be extremely helpful. That's what I'm saying. The way they talked about it in the articles. <laughs> my 11 year old son is sl silver. silver. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it, now I'm probably not gold anymore because I haven't played in a but long time. But you hit gold. I hit gold at one okay. point. Okay, yeah. you're gold. And you you're got gold. you got to so bronze two means he has to go to bronze three or bronze one, then get into gold five or silver, silver five, five, work yeah. his way all the way up through silver, and then get into gold. I mean, it's it's embarrassing, really. All right, so what's the, all right? So with magic, it's a uh, gold, uh, diamond, mythic. I think. Yeah, they've what's... got platinum and diamond, uh, and and then challenger. Which okay. are basically, and I think magic has challenger is when you're get your you know you have a shot to be getting into some pro leagues and stuff. So all right, that's any top. LOL players, uh, put put your uh, rank up. Let's uh, you know apparently there's a lot of you guys that played this. Yeah. Um, all right. When asked if he relied too much on a small group of close colleagues, Bankman Fried said, realistically speaking, I don't think anyone can maintain close contact and close communication with more than 15 people. I mean that seems like a stretch. Uh, he also said he's no longer in a romantic relationship with Caroline Ellison, but declined to comment further. So this is confirming a romantic relationship with Caroline Ellison, uh, and he is unable to have more than fifteen uh, close friends or colleagues, um, which is weird because I thought like we're our brains are literally wired to understand one hundred and fifty people. Mm -hmm. Uh, like all the dynamics of social network and, you know, who likes who and who doesn't like who. I th maybe it's 80. It's no, definitely I, more I've, than 15. I've heard a couple. Yeah, I've heard 300 is the most you can realistically maintain. I don't know about, like, what you're talking about understanding. I'm, it could I'm be palladium, too. That's good. That was good. Yeah. Palladium, too. That is good. All right, all right. Uh, that's that's uh, Scotty Swing with that, that one. All right, he couldn't explain a series of cryptic tweets he's been posting over the past two days, other than say he was making it up as he went along. Oh, yeah, I don't he, know. He I'm improvising. More this he's morning. playing jazz. Yeah, he's he's messing around. I, he, you saw he tweeted more of that this morning. Yeah, yeah. I'm just saying he's. Gonna... Is it past happened? 
I no, yeah, it's definitely past half. We're blocked on Ben's thing, so I can't look. I'll pull it up. He said basically none of this is legal advice. You know, he's gonna talk more about what's been happening or something, but he he never actually did. Let me see if he's done any of that. Yeah, that's the uh, wait a minute, SBS Mirrors. Uh, mysterious tweet storm all right so me and justin talked about it and uh not legal advice not financial advice this is all as i remember but my memory might be faulty in parts yeah and then one more tweet from that this morning he misspelled says, what happened. i'll get to what happened but for now let's talk about where we are today was his last tweet four hours ago so my guess is uh you know, this is all speculation all right so what is he doing is he having like a mental breakdown a manic episode i, I don't think that um is it a hacker I don't, I don't think it's a hacker i think it's him obviously he said to the times it is him i think it's maybe a, a angle where you can maybe try to have some sort of plea deal or insanity deal mm -hmm. where you just you kind of say there's like a there's a collapse of this young mind uh this young man's mind oh yeah and maybe there's going to be an angle for a favorable ruling when it comes to sentencing that's that's my guess 100 i agree with you 100 percent. i think they're definitely taking the insane you know out of his mind they're blaming they're going to start to blame the drugs i already saw that yesterday the stuff that he was taking was being used for treating parkinson's and stuff and is known for reckless behavior extreme gambling you know imp lack of impulse control yada 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 so they're gonna they're gonna go right to that and cite those side effects as oh that's the reason all this happened which uh clearly satoshi untrue. in the chat said he's there right now trying to track down uh sam i had the good idea yesterday got uh shot down yeah uh, i had the good idea of sending ben to the bahamas uh trying to find any ftx employee that would speak on the record and if that fails literally like he does the phone records do the phone record in front of the headquarters or the mansion and uh that would that would be gold that would be gold but uh it might not be safe for him and yeah. uh, i think it would be Maybe it wouldn't. I don't know. Actually, who knows? Who knows with the Maker Dow guy? Like, actually, I don't even know anymore. So, uh, but yeah, I, th I think that would be content gold. Hit that like button if uh, you, you you think that'd be uh, pretty entertaining. Uh, we got a lot of questions in the chat asking, do you think uh, he'll do any jail time? You think yes, you do. Okay. Yes. Uh, I mean, he frauded more people than Bernie Madoff, who spent the rest of his life in jail. Um, now, is he politically connected? Yes. But is that going to be a benefit or a negative? I don't know. I think it could go either way. I, I'm kind of leaning towards a coin toss. Uh, obviously, being a huge donor to uh, you know Joe Biden in 2020 and a huge donor to Democrats and Republicans mm -hmm. in 2022, uh, there's, we're kind of we're being divided on that. And let's just not be divided. Let's be united on this guy's a fraudster. Uh, yeah, I think it was about a 60-40, 65-35 split. He donated heavily to the 2022 midterms. And so that's, there's political connections there. Which ironically, all of this came out the day the midterms happened, which just, you know. Yeah, and SBF, uh, yeah, the FTX was founded, what, two weeks or within two weeks of that uh, of, super PAC being yeah, formed within by Within two his weeks mother. of uh, Biden's, uh, FTX was created within two weeks of Biden announcing his bid for presidency. And then the super PAC was created not long after that. There's definitely a lot of political ties back to this. I'm going to go ahead and say... You know, now who knows what's going to happen? This is just a guess. I'm going to yeah, say yeah, we're just guessing. We're no, not legal experts. I'm going to say no jail time. I'm going to say gonna say no. I put a more I put higher likelihood on uh, death than jail, in my mm. opinion. Mm. Um, but that's just me. Okay, okay, yeah. I mean, that's uh, one of the things I thought of when I saw these tweets would be, you know, is this uh, going to be like a self-imposed right uh, Epstein, not like Epstein, like a, 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 the actual thing that they say happened. Uh, obviously, we don't want anything like that to happen. I would like uh, this to be aired out in the court of public opinion and see evidence brought and help wash out the bad actors. Because if all this is brought to light and people do serve time, I think it makes a safer space uh, moving forward. And I think there's less likelihood that people will lose their life savings in the future. And so I think there is a lot of positive that can go through just letting the courts uh, do its thing. Now, when I said it could go either way, his political connections, it could also bite him in the butt. Uh, although he did give to Republicans in the midterms, I don't think I, I, I do think that there's going to be people on the right who don't give a flip about that. And they're going to see that, oh, wow, I have this huge headline with Biden's number two donor and it's, he'll be a political scapegoat. Deservedly so. I'm not saying it's undeserved, but I think that might create a spotlight for him as well in which there would be more scrutiny, not less. It's going to be interesting to see uh, how it goes, though. Uh, 200. No, that's not right. That's not right. It's was, it was a lot more. It's uh, his the president, the president of FTX donated a lot more than 200K. I'll double check, but I, I 
I thought it was 24 million. All right, 40 million to 24 is what I thought. All right, what started a day ago with a couple of tweets, single letters, ultimately spelling what happened, continues with more mysterious tweets from SBF, and we kind of covered it. Uh, not legal advice, not financial advice. That's all as I remember it, but memory might be faulty. Oh, he just did a new one. 12 minutes, ago, two minutes okay, ago. Okay, bring it up. What does it say? Uh, let me see. New breaking news. Breaking news. Hit that like button if you like the breaking news. Let's see. Where is he at? All right. I can pull it up on that other computer, but. Okay. All right. Well, we'll pull it up. We'll pull it up. Um, like I said, we're blocked here. Yeah. Um, well, I, so I got it right here. Basically, you know, number 11, I'll get to what happened. But for now, let's talk about where we were today. That was four hours ago. So number 12 just posted four minutes ago. To the best, four minutes. Of, to best of my knowledge, as of post 11-7, the potential for errors. A, Alameda had more assets than liabilities, but not liquid. B, Alameda had margin position on FTX International. C, FTX US had enough to repay all customers. Not everyone necessarily agrees with it. So he's just going to go through, it looks like, and tell his side of the story. Uh, it's getting pretty interesting. I read an all-hands statement that came, that was sent to all uh, FTX employees. I believe it was made by Caroline Ellison and mm -hmm. kind of her breakdown. Member of, of the polycule. What's that? Member of the polycule. Yeah. Uh, breaking down basically her take on what happened, when it happened, who knew about it. So a lot of this, I think, is just CYA at this point, trying to yeah. mitigate the damage on other people around them and who knew what and all that kind of stuff. So uh, to me, it just kind of it almost feels like with this tweet thing feels like somebody who is enjoying the fact that everybody's hanging on his every tweet, his every word, his every moment. Uh, yeah, I, I think there's definitely an element of that. When you were seen uh, as a villain, mm -hmm. you might as well just focus that I have spotlight. Right. Uh, think of, uh, was it, uh, was his face on Up Only? Mm -hmm. uh, telling, you know, Martin Screlly, you know, it's like, hey, man, Doe, it's okay. You know, like, Doe's, like, enjoying mm -hmm. that everyone was like, oh, my God, he's on, he's on. Whoa, this is so wild. There's pumpkins behind him with this green screen. Yeah, it's, it's, you might as well just, like, enjoy being a villain. Well, and... What I hear, Suzu, obviously, Three Arrows Capital just recently showed back up. He was on that same stream. From what I hear, the reason they're getting their names out there, trying to, like, whitewash their reputation is they're back raising funds again. Mm, so that's mm. interesting. It's like the party. Uh, that music's still playing in the corner. Yeah. All right. FTX says it could have over 1 million creditors and new bankruptcy filing. Uh, indicated it had more than 100,000 uh, creditors. But then in an updated... In fact, there could be more than 1 million in these Chapter 11 cases. Uh, they've been in contact with dozens of regulators in the U.S. and overseas. Uh, so if it had, so earlier they said 100,000, but then now they're saying it could be over a million here. Uh, the, the real story I've been seeing is, you know, unfortunately, it might look like all these people's names and number of yeah. assets might be public knowledge if it goes to the courts, it which will is be. a security issue for wealthy people. Yeah, no, it definitely will be. It'll be, I mean, much like Celsius, almost everybody in Celsius got published through the court docs. I have a feeling it's going to be very similar. Yeah, and there's there's companies who all they do is like cold call millionaires. Um, and so, yeah, this this isn't good for people because not only are there companies that where people just cold call millionaires, there's companies where they just track down millionaires, find their phone number, address, all these things. All this is going to hit. Criminals use these lists as well. A lot of it's just used for good. Uh, Angel. Angel does that, right? She like, mm -hmm. and, you know, yes. looks for these people. She's not obviously she's not selling it to North Korean hackers. She's selling it to people just like trying to sell something. Yeah, um, but well, she yeah, works for is... a nonprofit that raises funds, obviously, and so that's uh, that's what they do is reach out to high net worth individuals that might be looking for a place to donate. But now this is going to be oh, you have twenty million dollars in Bitcoin, you mm -hmm. know, well, maybe we're going to show up to your mansion with masks. Uh, so <laughs> if if this not if this does hit public uh, knowledge, that's not good. That's not good at all. All right, liquid, not to freak out anybody who has an account on there. Well, like, I was going to say, know. good thing is they don't have it anymore, so they don't have <laughs> yeah. to worry about it. I'm broke, bro. Yeah. Like, yeah. you saw you uh, saw what happened. Yeah, yeah. obviously. I had yeah. 20 Bitcoin. Exactly. Obviously, right. if you lost a lot of money on FTX, uh, we feel bad for you. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, right. I was proud to see at the poll at the top of the show, though, 90% uh, of our audience said they did not have funds on FTX. Only 11% did. So 89-11, which is pretty cool. Okay, not bad. Not bad. I, I, I bet... I wonder what the normal tracking is for just people who are into crypto, you know, which, so I think, I think that's good that, uh, 89%, you know, hopefully protected from that. All right. Liquid global halts withdrawals as FTX contagion continues. FTX owned cryptocurrency exchange liquid has announced the suspension of all fiat 
and crypto withdrawals. I think this is Japan based. Mm -hmm. This is their market maker. Yeah, fiat and crypto withdrawals have been suspended on Liquid Global in compliance with requirements of voluntary Chapter 11 proceedings. They say they will provide further updates when available. And uh, all of its operating subsidiaries, including yeah, Japan based, uh, I'm not sure how you say that, corporation uh, in Singapore were acquired by FTX Trading in an undisclosed deal earlier this year. God, you know, those uh, customers got to be hating that. They halted withdrawals just as to a growing list of companies affected by recent events, uh, such as BlockFi and Asino uh, Global, uh, due to the uh, exposure to FTX. So we, we hate to hear that for uh, our Japanese fans. Uh, hopefully you didn't have too many funds or you got it out in time. Um, that's, that's unfortunate. The contagion is spreading. All right, FTX accounts drainer swaps millions in stolen crypto becomes 35th largest Ether holder. This story is almost like disappearing. We can't let this story disappear. Yeah, there's the uh, the quote unquote hacker, insider, whoever mm -hmm. uh, drained uh, millions of dollars in crypto. Funds were converted to DAI stablecoins and bridge to the ETH network. Uh, whoever was behind the $600 million uh, exploit of uh, FTX started moving around uh, the funds during European morning hours on Tuesday. I wouldn't look too much into that. Uh, the addresses over several transactions amassed over 48 million of DAI and swapped it all into 37,000 Ether, now holds over 288,000 Ether and is the 35th larger, uh, largest owner of the crypto uh, by Peck Shield. Uh, that's a lot of Ether. Separately, some 7,420 BNB tokens uh, were converted uh, on Pancake, and then the exploiter uh, bridged over to the ETH network. So yeah, the, I mean, I, I think it's less likely. I mean, Sam uh, obviously is a little bit busy, might not be him. Ben, uh, sources say it's, uh, what's his name, Dan? Mm -hmm. um, I'm blanking on the last. No, is it Feinberg? Yeah, it sounds yeah. like Dan David Field. All in podcast. And so. Friedberg or Freinberg. Freed. Or Freed. Freedberg or Freedberg. something like that. Yeah. 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 I mean, there's a lot that one thing that's interesting to me is both seeing just recently we've got a new unknown Bitcoin wallet. That's one of the biggest Bitcoin wallet addresses now. And now we've obviously got this all this Ethereum becoming one of the largest Ethereum holders right now. So that yeah, and you saw me, that big Bitcoin wallet. That's right? what I'm talking about. Yeah, that yeah. is fascinating to me that in the wake of all of this, now we've got these new unknown entities controlling large, large, large amounts of Bitcoin and Ethereum. Uh, so I think this story is going to continue to unravel for probably years to come. Now, I'm, I'm so torn on who's this big owner of Bitcoin. Part of me wants to say it's an intelligence uh, agency. Part of me wants to say no because they wouldn't have all their assets in one wallet. But then I reverse and I say it is possible because then you use it as a flex against other countries and uh, maybe as proof of funds when you're trying to deal with yeah. dictators. Yeah, you know, I like think I think that I think what we're experiencing right now is traditional finance. This like what we're experiencing, the run up and the breakdown has trade fi written all over it. And I think we're starting to see nation states starting to get involved. And that's going to yeah. be what and our insider uh, said. Russia's been, he told us 18 months ago, Russia's buying yeah. Bitcoin in well, mass. The, yeah, they've all been involved. And I think the El Salvador putting it out there really got everybody's attention that this is the direction things are going. And so we're starting to see the way nations and big money players manipulate markets to win. Some are saying it's BlackRock. Uh, someone said Biden. I don't know if they mean Hunter or mm -hmm. Joe, which one. Uh, let uh, Jaeger, let me know which Biden you mean. See, BlackRock uh, is not DZ. It's not mine. It's not, spoiler alert, I don't control the Bitcoin wallet. I wouldn't be surprised by BlackRock at all. The more I look into this, the more I see there. Vanguard and BlackRock, from before Terra Luna and before Three Arrows Capital, their hands have been all over this. I'm looking into Silvergate right now. A lot of people that are have been in crypto for a while know Silvergate is basically the bank for all the crypto exchanges. Um, at this point, owned primarily by Vanguard and BlackRock, uh, set up in 2013. It's just, the the more I dig into this, the deeper it gets. And yeah, it and you see that it's just the same people. It's the same people. It's the same people yeah. pulling all these strings. And it's yeah. not, it wasn't SBF. Yeah. He, uh, yeah, he's a, I hate to, a scapegoat. I, yeah, I hate to like try to give him a pass, but yeah, Patsy scapegoat comes mm -hmm. to mind. All right, Trezor reports 300% surge in sales revenue due to the contagion. Yeah, a lot of people have taken self-custody. Uh, go to bitboycrypto.com. We have a couple of, uh, deals you could take advantage of. So Trezor usage is up and uh, BitGet. Uh, so more exchanges starting to open. Now BitGet prepares 5 million uh, USD builders fund to help people distressed by the FTX collapse. 
Uh, I don't know uh, if you want to read this. Maybe yeah, we don't have into... to read the whole thing. I just wanted to mention. I think like big. No, Cat, it's a good thing. Yeah, I obviously think. a new partner here on the channel. They're coming out and doing. They're definitely doing proof of reserves, uh, and they're going to show all their liabilities as well. I was talking with them about that this morning. They have no debt as an exchange, which is great. Uh, we just want to see it proved out. So they are going really hard to help people build this back. Obviously, a lot of people wiped out from FTX. We're going to be we we're starting this new, you see right there on the screen, the trading uh, competition for a shot to win 100 Bitcoin. So mm -hmm. they're basically setting some Bitcoin and some dollars aside to help people build back, whether you're a creator, whether you're a trader. They want to incentivize you, obviously, to use their exchange. We want to see free market competition. We talked about that a little bit yesterday. So always, 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 of course, be careful with any single exchange. Don't leave your funds on there for a long period of time. But if you're a trader and you want to trade it back, BitGet is uh, on on the path to uh, helping us all recover our funds. So we yeah, uh, they say there's top five exchange, so yeah. a, a decent amount of uh, liquidity there as well. Uh, I don't know if you mean my Twitter handle, uh, DZ underscore BTC. Uh, Nike launches NFT platform. Steve Jobs sandals sell for 200k. What? Metaverse is finally rising. Uh, the industry has garnered interest among brands in various industries, with Nike, Space One Industries, and GIA Fashionverse representing fashion and footwear ecosystem and style. According to reports, Nike has officially launched its NFT marketplace called Swoosh. Dot swoosh. Uh, in other news, NFT of Birkenstock sandals, oh my God, worn by Steve Jobs has been sold for 218K after it was initially projected to be sold between 60 and 80. Uh, let's see, uh, had a 19 bidders uh, and you got the 360 digital representation of uh, the sandals and uh, also comes with the physical. So, hmm. all right, so you do get the physical with the imprint of Steve Jobs' feet. I mean, I, I would be okay wearing another man's shoe like 15 years later. All right, all right, no, ain't no funk on it left. But man, I, I ain't wearing no man's shoe. Yeah. Like, I, especially a sandal. Yeah. It's but I don't know if it's meant to be worn. I just, but yeah. is it a display thing? Like, hey, hey yeah, I think it. I'm like close to the same height as say like Allen Iverson, maybe. Like, yeah, man, no, this is like AI wore these shoes. So I got another man's sweat, <laughs> like all up in my shoe. I don't, I don't, it's like sharing a, a golfing glove. It's like very intimate. Yeah, I guess it'd be like sports memorabilia for the, for tech people, you know, like, yeah, I, but it's like Birkenstocks. having like socks. Yeah, I get it. They're so I, ugly. Yeah, it's Jesus very sandals. It does represent, though, I would think culture in that time. You yeah. know, like if you no, think, all right, all right. Let me ask you this: Is he is this person wearing them? No, no, not a chance. Allie, are they wearing them? She's not listening. Okay, I. You know what? I mean, I guess you would have to like. You have to have the same size shoe. All right. Is I he think it's like once? in this. He's probably wearing them once. I think this person has them like in a glass case in his basement. You know, like just like you would have like a man cave, right? And you know, like other, maybe you might have a Brady jersey up there, yeah, or a Falcon a jersey. He's got it in like sealed. a glass case, and he's got like. Oh man, those are Steve Jobs shoes. You know, that's the first crypto punk, you know, like all techie kind okay, of stuff. Okay. Okay. Now when you put it that way, like not just alone, it's with the collage. Yeah, right. It's with the might have the, some the, NFTs. The orgy of memorabilia, if you will. Maybe uh, he's yeah. got Jack's first tweet NFT there next to it. <laughs> I got wrecked on that one. Yeah, it's uh you have like a framed email from uh, you know, like a hacked exchange or something, you know, like guarantee it's somebody that doesn't put a lot of value on You Silk. have like your baggie of that uh those drugs that you bought on Silk Road. <laughs> yeah. Like the That'd first this is the first dime bag. That'd be cool. That would actually be cool. But yeah. uh yeah. <laughs> Weird flex. Good luck trying to find that one. All right. No, no, no. This was the first dime bag, I swear. All right, Apple job listings and patents hint at foray into 3D mixed reality world. Mm. A mixed reality world by Apple could be fast approaching as recent job openings uh, show them hiring a number of engineers with AR and VR experience. This is going to be uh, huge. I would say they are going to be the number one Oculus competitor. Uh, those who don't know, Meta has a deal with, uh, was it uh, Oakley, I believe. Mm. Um, all right, so we don't have this. I just going to briefly look at this. So since November 1st, over 30 jobs 30 different jobs have been listed on the careers page. Um, and this is while tech is having a, a slowdown of hiring. So that means that they're expanding this uh, during this time and uh, mostly going to be based in its uh, technology de uh, development group, uh, secretive team uh, that stems back as far as 2017. And they're understood to be working on AR and VR technology. They've not confirmed that a device is in the works, although it's widely considered an open secret. Uh, and they're currently hiring for 150 positions. Um, in this role, you'll work closely with other developers and build tools and frameworks to enable connected experiences in a 3D mixed reality world. 
yeah, this is going to be huge. I don't know when the adoption is going to happen where you wear your reader glasses or your prescription glasses or your sunglasses or your um, Jeffrey Dahmer glasses, whatever kind of glasses you want to wear. And it will basically give you a heads up display of the world. Uh, Google Glass, uh, you know, they were testing this 10 yeah. years ago. They kind of put a pause on it. I think they were too early. They try. It was a great idea, but people weren't ready for wearables like that yet. And like the cost of producing it and the cost of getting it into people's hands was way too high. And it wasn't like people didn't have a great experience. They weren't ready. Yet. And I, think, I don't think uh, from a legal reason, I don't think it'll be used until we have uh, self-driving cars hmm. that are like a huge part of uh, the network of vehicles out there. Because they're going to definitely want to recommend, do not wear it while you're driving. Yeah. What's everyone going to do? They're going to wear it while they're driving. And I, I'm sure the math uh, was played into the, the part of the formula where someone could die. We're going to be a headline on New York Times, uh, you know, because they hate big tech. And then we're going to, you know, our stock's going to fall 10% because some person died. And then, you know, I'm, I'm sure that math uh, found its way into the equation. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and so once there's self-driving cars, you can kind of eliminate that. Now, people are still going to, people die, you know, walking into traffic, looking at their smartphone, but you don't blame Apple. You don't mm -hmm. blame Android. Uh, you don't blame, you know, Clash of Clans or whatever they're playing or, you know, was, you know they're on Twitter. Uh, so they, they got to make it where you see it and you're like, oh, yeah, that's that's on the user. Yeah. What a bozo. Um, but if you're driving your car and there's actual usage like, yeah, uh, you know, this place has a sale and it's, you know, you, you turn your head to look at the store. The next thing you know, you crash into the car in front of you. Um, so they're going to want to avoid any of that. But, yeah, it's going to be cool when you look at a human being. And you can see like their last tweet or their latest Instagram post or whatever kind of filter that you have. Um, never mind, I was going to go in some <laughs> uh, some spicy takes. Yeah, I knew uh, you were going with that one. Super. Why, why are they maybe. smirking, yeah. looking at me? Like no, that. one other thing I didn't see it mentioned What's there. Uh, coming out of Apple today, I saw that Apple Pay has partnered with Circle, uh, which is a one of those things that will just slide under the news radar. Yep. It doesn't seem big. Yep, like but Google it, and stuff. Like yeah, it, it's big. That is the last step in my, or one of the last steps in my opinion for USDC getting fast track to becoming a digital dollar. Same yeah, we, we've talked about this. Yeah. It's going to happen because it happens on Google Pay or Apple Pay. Right. It's going to happen because that chip reader on your debit card, you you tap it and it drains you of uh, whatever, you know, stable coin or maybe, you know, Maybe you're in a bull market and it's a peak and you do want to spend Bitcoin. I know there's a lot of people say never spend your Bitcoin, but you know what? When Bitcoin was above 50K, it was a pretty smart idea to spend your Bitcoin. And I think there's going to be something like that every four years. You're going to start uh, to see cell phones come with digital wallets like that. The last Galaxy phones have started to do. You're going to see that with iPhones. as well. I mean, they already do. You have an Apple wallet on there. So you're going to be able to pay with Apple Pay. It's going to be synced to USDC. You're going to be able to swap cryptos through it. And basically, uh, Apple will become, and Samsung will probably become the most prominent crypto wallet. Uh, Big Boy Wilson, here's my hack. Best place to turn cash into Bitcoin and withdraw immediately, debit or ACH transfer. I use Coinbase as my fiat on off-ramp, uh, but I use my little Coinbase hack. Uh, so Coinbase charges to use your bank, but they don't charge for PayPal. So you can uh, sell your crypto, move the cash to PayPal for free. They don't charge you for that. Uh, PayPal will move it to you for free. Uh, one to three business days, or you could pay for it immediate. It takes like a minute um, and they charge a, a small percentage, but it caps at $25. And so if you're moving, you need $5,000 right now, you can move it all, uh, no fees, except for the $25 PayPal fee. And it, it's in your bank, like minutes. Um, so just that's, that's my, that's DZ's hack. Again, everyone, you know, that's just my fiat on ramp and don't store long-term on these exchanges. That's just uh, when you got to move in and out. All right, PlayStation dives deeper into NFT sector. Rival Xbox showing caution. What is up, Microsoft? You got to get with the program here. According to PlayStation's patent filings, they're getting more interested in NFTs and blockchain. The patent is called Tracking Unique In-Game Digital Assets Using Tokens on a Distributed Ledger. It primarily focuses on expected applications for NFTs and gaming, namely creating, using, and modifying in-game assets. First submitted in May of uh, last year, but published only a few days ago. So they're, they're hiding this. They were bullish on NFTs. Uh, actually, that was selling May, walk away. Bitcoin was crashing. Uh, they were probably like, eh, hide that report, uh, bury it for 18 months. Uh, so now it's seeing uh, the light of day, literally 18 months later. Uh, <laughs> Bitcoin will be higher by then, right? No, it's it's half the price as it was in May. Uh, Sony has experience with NFTs and the gaming-related patent is far from its first foray into the technology. They're working with Theta Labs to launch 3D NFTs uh, compatible with spatial reality displays. 
uh, Sony Europe also joined Theta's blockchain validator program. It's one of the biggest developments. Uh, Ubisoft launched Ubisoft Quartz, a platform for uh, playable energy efficient NFTs. It since ended NFT content and supports for its Ghost Recon Breakpoint game. Uh, I don't play a little Ghost Recon or anything like that, but yeah, it is the future. It's just when it happens, uh, not if. You can say something. No, I just I was wondering. Are we in quick hits? Are these the quick hits? Uh, somehow I'm lost on this. Right yeah, now. I didn't see XRP uh, Coinbase because there's Nike and it should have been uh, right there, but that was uh, Apple trademark. It's probably uh, next here. All right, so there's the board eight. Yeah, I see X. Yeah. All go. right, here we go. All right, if you like that XRP news on the daily, please hit that like button. And if you like that 10% pump, yeah. let us add, hit that like button again, all right? Coinbase officially enters the fray in XRP lawsuit to support Ripple against the SEC. I knew I liked uh, Ben's uncle for some reason. <laughs> uh, Coinbase has officially submitted its amicus brief to support Ripple uh, in the lawsuit against the SEC. Uh, so just yet another ally filing the amicus brief. And this is just basically saying, uh, here's my formal declaration to submit evidence against the SEC. Here's my take, and here's my, uh, you know, here, here's my receipts. Here's mm -hmm. my tea. And so now that Coinbase is doing it, so Coinbase got a lot of flack for, you know, delisting XRP. I think they're stuck between a rock and a hard place. I don't think they really had a choice. At the end of the day, Brian Armstrong has to protect his investors and his employees and his customers. And I don't think the, the what he could gain from having XRP did not equal what he could lose uh, by being in the spotlight of Gary Gensler and the SEC. And will they have it? I think so eventually. I think, yes, Coinbase will have XRP eventually. I think they have to win first, though. And I, that's me saying I do think they will win. Um, or settle. What's your timeline for XRP being on Coinbase? I would say 14 months just in time for the nice run-up. Oh, no. I think it'll be I think it'll be relisted within 48 hours of the settlement. Uh, now. Ooh, so you think they're ready? I know they're ready. I mean, they, accident, they accidentally well, relisted good. it. They accidentally relisted it on Coinbase Pro months ago. So they, it's one click away for them to relist it. Uh, I th and I think, you know, they know where this case is going to settle. The fact that there's been so many am amicus briefs uh, allowed. Yeah, ally after ally after yeah. ally. Saying, so I think you know, they, they settle. Here's why. Yeah. I think they settle, it should, you know, end of this year, beginning of next year. And I think it'll be relisted very quickly afterwards. Now, the question is, if it gets settled right now in the midst of the market we're sitting in, does it have a dramatic impact immediately or does it take until next year to be felt, you know, price-wise? Yeah. I, I still think that you'll see the biggest price run up middle to end of next year whenever the regulation gets cleared up um but you know, yeah i mean bitcoin volume is gonna spike it much more than sec uh Suppression. grand news yeah. during a bear market yeah I agree. and uh you know i talk about this with i was talking about this with the nft person today uh we we're talking about the cardano market and it's like yeah it's it's when bitcoin goes up is when cardano nft ecosystem will be thriving and i, I hate that it is that way but it, it's at least for the next cycle or two um that is going to be what's going on because there are things called uh, Bitcoin trading pairs, and there's a lot of whales who uh, like to use those things, hmm. and that injects a lot of liquidity, much more so than a bunch of minnows uh, buying 50 bucks you know, every Friday. All right, Bored Ape creator Yuga Labs acquires a Beeple's. We knew a uh, 10K uh, NFT project, 10KTF. Uh, Beeple will serve as an advisor for Yuga after the NFT startup he co-founded joins the Bored Ape crew. I think bigger than... Yuga landing this project is they now have Beeple on the board. And so I think that's hugely bullish for the Yuga team. Uh, they aren't done expanding after purchasing. Of course, they bought CryptoPunks and MeBits from Larva Labs. Uh, today, they announced a new one. This one is by Beeple. Uh, Beeple, those who don't know, he had the $69 million uh, sale of his NFT. And I, I, we can't even show his latest drawings. Have you seen his SBF I, tweets? Yeah, it's crazy. They are insane. I saw it I, last I, night, right before I went to sleep, and I think nightmares. I might have been scarred. Yeah. Nightmares. Did you? Did, you're waking up like thrashing in the sheets, yeah. like sweating and I was stuff. Like, what is this? Did you picture yourself like a? Uh, never mind. I'm no, no. All right. Uh, were you in the polycule? <laughs> I could say that. Were you in the polycule? <laughs> I was not. Okay. Okay. Whew. Oh, I wanted to make sure. All right. Uh, Ten KTF. It's a story-driven NFT project built around a fictional digital artisan. Uh, name Wag Me San. Uh, he develops custom outfits that uh, owners of popular PFP projects, including the apes, cool cats, nouns, and moonbirds, and others, can have applied to their own NFT artwork. Uh, they can also order physical apparel, apparel based on the artwork. So it's a cool idea. Um, it's cool artwork. It's Beeple. Um, it's Yuga. I'm I'm, I'm pretty uh, behind this. And oh God, 
You ready for uh, the, the bad part of the story, though? Hit me. You ready for the bombshell? One of Yugo's backers was FTX Ventures. We went down in flames last week when the exchange collapsed amid a liquidity crunch. Yuga uh, co-founder Gordon Goner tweeted, FTX collapse hasn't affected us. And it previously, they had removed funds that they held in FTX US. So they pulled out their money. And I'm sure uh, Sam is like, uh, that ape coin allocation I get in 18 months, I need it now. Give it to me now. Yeah. Um, no, no. It's, uh, that's why you got to love uh, smart contracts and DeFi because it works as intended. Drips, lockups, staking, all these things that's immutable on the blockchain. You can have these super secretive shady deals uh, happening amongst your polycule. Uh, no, it's all open. It's all transparent. And uh, big up to the Yuga Labs team. Uh, I told you guys I gave you alpha. Now, let me see if this alpha played out. We'll, we'll end on this note. I said, uh, because we were talking about it on Around the Blockchain, and I said, there's this list of coins that have FTX exposure. Some of these projects have tweeted, uh, yeah, it did affect us, or it didn't affect us because we pulled our money out. I said, you go to that list and you find a project that pulled their money out, it's probably a guaranteed long, probably guaranteed uh, profit, not financial advice, but you know what I'm doing? I'm market buying Ape right now. I market bought Ape seven days ago. Okay, and this was the uh, this was the dip right here on the 13th two days ago. So obviously in retrospect, yeah, yeah, you bought the dip, DZ. You didn't really uh, say much there. No, if if you got in and to to be fair, it was closer to 280, uh, not to not the low low. So it was it was like 280, 280 right now, 305, 25 cents, uh, roughly actually about a 10 percent pump. Did 2x, 3x. That's a 30 percent gain. So a little, little bit of a gain there for the people. I'm no Frankie Candles Mafia member, um, but hey, I, I call him like I see him. And uh, I knew Ape not having FTX exposure was going to be bullish. But this makes me more bullish, and uh, I might have to uh, might have to buy even more on Friday. We're about to end it. We do have the Q&A show in the basement. I was on there yesterday. It's fantastic. We're really getting a good community there. Uh, maybe we'll, uh, we'll raid some uh, cool stream afterwards. Come join, ask your questions. It's your direct access to the Bit Squad. Um, come join us there. We're going to be there. Smash that like button while you're out. That's all we got time for today. Stay safe, foo, my friends.